Athletics is such a big part of my life and it has been for about half of my life really. I think the life of an athlete is maybe not as exciting as you would think, it's very routine. I was always okay as a junior basically, I did manage to make some GB under 20 and under 23 teams but my breakthrough year was really in 2017 when I won the British Championships and I qualified for my first international competition for Great Britain, the World Championships in London. And that's really what catapulted me onto the GB team. I've been part of the relay team for about six years in a row and you know I've managed to come away with several international medals which is been really exciting for me. In 2021 I went to my first Olympics in Tokyo and it's the high point of sport so it doesn't really get better than that. After last season I got into winter training basically for this year. Things were going really well. You know I was running quicker than I ever had before. I was lifting heavier in the gym but I'd had some ongoing back issues and we just didn't quite get on top of them or really understand them fully. So I tried to open up my season in January, over 60 metres indoors, and a couple of hours after I got home, I just couldn't stand anymore. For a few days, I was basically bedridden. I'm telling myself, okay, there's obviously something wrong with my back. I don't know what it is. We managed to get an MRI, which confirmed that I had slipped a disc, basically, between the L5 and S1 vertebrae, it compressed the sciatic nerve, which was causing me all of my issues. I saw a specialist after my MRI scan who gave me maybe a more realistic time scale, you know, kind of speaking one to two years realistically, but he also did hit me with the bombshell that I might never fully regain full nerve functionality. That is not really the thing that you want to hear as an athlete. It kind of um, hit home that last year I just wouldn't be able to compete at all. It wasn't going to be a quick fix like a lot of other injuries. That was a real setback, you know. The not being able to stand, I've never had that before. So obviously alarm bells are going off. But as an athlete, you always kind of tell yourself that things are going to be okay. You maybe don't let yourself understand uh, fully what the situation is. Luckily, I managed to avoid the surgery. Um, initially, we thought I would have to have surgery, but the disc managed to reabsorb by itself with time and physio exercises. So now I'm basically battling the nerve damage to my sciatic nerve, and I'm just trying to regain as much nerve functionality as I can to get back to my best self. It's really hard not to be too hard on yourself. I think I've obviously gone so many years competing and training at a certain level, and I just need to remember to be kind to myself. So I might not be able to do everything that I could before, or maybe I can, but just not as well. You ready? Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three. It's tough. Um, I definitely haven't navigated this situation as smoothly as I would have liked, but be kind to yourself, try and be realistic, don't put unnecessary expectations on yourself, just really rely on any support network that you have because um, you can really make this an isolating experience and it's, it's good to have people there to support you and bring you through it. My family and my coach and my training group have all been really good. I think I've not necessarily been the easiest person to deal with in this injury. I think they can see how frustrated I've been, but they've been there to support me and um, they've been really understanding about the whole thing. I've been about a year into my injury now. I'm getting there. I'm not where I was, but things are improving a lot and I think I have exceeded my recovery time scale so far. So that's really encouraging and I just have to keep going from there. I think it's just re-evaluating what you want out of yourself, constantly re reflecting, basically looking at the progress that you've made so far and, um, you know, not forgetting to actually enjoy yourself because, uh, you know, if you forget to enjoy yourself, then that then you're lost, basically. <laughs>
of the first proper track, track session it. back, so technically it's an easy one, but it's kind of a bit shock to just that. Last season was a complete write-off for me. We're at the time of year where we're starting our winter training, which is prep for the next season. The Olympics are on the horizon. So my short-term goal is basically to hopefully slot into winter training in good shape, basically, um, see if I can manage the sessions as I would pre-injury or just gradually build and just take it, you know, on a day-by-day -day basis. I am a bit hesitant to put too many performance goals on my radar for next year because, again, I don't fully know what the recovery path for this injury will be. You know, the big competitions, the Olympics, they're on my radar. I would absolutely love to get myself there. If I manage to fully recover from this, um, I feel like I've got unfinished business with the 400. I would love to knock some time off my personal best, you know, to manage to progress myself and also make those GB teams again as an individual 400 meter runner. I've been on the relay team quite a lot, but I felt like I never fully achieved what I wanted to with the individual 400. So I would love to just give it um, another go. I'm a very goal-driven person. I feel like I always need to be working towards a purpose. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be something like make the Olympic team, you know, it can just be a much smaller, more achievable goal, but I feel like I always need something to give me direction, basically, and um, just give me something to aim for. Making the Tokyo team was the highlight of my career so far. It was my biggest achievement. And you know, that's without basically any adversity. So to have had this setback and to refocus and you know, manage to get myself in a place where I'm competitive, it would mean so much more just because I realized that having full functionality of your body is a luxury and I really wouldn't take it for granted anymore.